The routing add in SolidWorks lets you quickly and easily create flexible tubing routes between components. The design library lets you choose from a variety of standard fitting that can be inserted into the tubing route. In addition, route properties can be configured to meet the design specifications, and either flexible or orthogonal routes can be created. By using the auto route functionality, route paths can be automatically generated to fit user specifications. In this tutorial, I will walk you through creating a flexible tubing route between some existing components within an assembly. I'll show you how to edit the route to accommodate a few tubing clips and a cylindrical envelope. I'll also cover a few helpful topics such as using the repair route command and the reroute supply option to help if you run into errors. Here I have an assembly that has a few fittings and a base. The fittings were previously dragged and dropped from the design library. In this tutorial, I'll be covering the process of creating a flexible tube route between these components. There are many ways to start a route. On the tubing to tab of the command manager, I can begin to route using the start to point command, or I could start a route by using the start by drag and drop command to drag routing component into the assembly. <laughs> In this assembly, both the components and the connection points are already present. So I can simply right click the closed connection point and select. Start route. The route properties manager appears, and I can adjust the properties of this tube route. I will leave the base configuration as a tube with a half inch outer diameter, hundreds of an inch wall. I will also make sure the use flexible hoses option is checked. Leaving this checked allows you to create flexible tubing routes using supply shaped segment for the path. Clearing the checkbox makes it so, so that a rigid path for the route is assumed. Since the intent is to have flexible route to continuous bends connecting to the fittings, I'll go ahead and check the box and leave the other settings at their defaults. When I click the green check, I'll place the into new 3D sketch. First, I'll right click the fitting C point and add it to the route. As tab appears from the component. Next, I'll click the auto route command from the tubing command manager toolbar. Let me quickly go over the different options available to you in the auto route property manager. In the routing mode group, group box, in auto route option lets you choose points lines that the route will pass through. This option goes hand in hand with the orthogonal route option, which when checked in generates route with the straight paths. And mainly, the route along geometry option allows you to select existing surface as reference for the route. And you can dimension the route segment from the sections. To edit option allows to manipulation of the existing route by dragging in the graphic window. Finally, the reroute supply option allows you to update the current route so it passes through the components. I'll make sure that the auto route routing mode is on and that the orthogonal route checkbox is clear. This way, router will be create supply shaped route between the two components. Next, I'll select the endpoints on the two connection stubs and you can see the route. I want to this route pass through a few tubing clips. But before I add the clips, I'll set through routing mode to rerouting the supplying. In the design library, I'll browse to the routing tube folder. I'll drag drop down the tubing clip components on the lower right corner of the base. With the routing mode set to the route the supply and the select the box active. I'll click the original route first and then I'll click on the clip axis where I want to tube to travel. The route updates and looks correct. So I click the green checkbox twice to finish. With the first route complete, I'll exit the sketch and the sub assembly. Now I'll create a second route using the same process. I'll start the route using this C point. Enable use flexible hoses in the property manager and click the green check. I'll create the second step by adding the other C point to the route. Then enable auto route to connect the two stubs. I'll click the both endpoints of the stubs and the route is automatically generated. From here, I'll route uh, supply to pass through a clip. I, I enable reroute supply. 
then drag another tubing clip on the top left hole in the base and to read out the tube I'll select the spline and the clip axis checking the green check twice complete the auto route command and to finish the tube I'll exit the sketch and the sub assembly next uh, let's add the third I'll start it out in the same way to the previous by right click on the first C point and selecting start route Then I'll add the other step by right clicking the C point and selecting add to route. I'll click auto route icon in the tubing command manager toolbar. And with the auto route made active, I'll drag drop on the tubing clips into the assembly. I'll add two more clips. With the outer route mode enable, I'll select the endpoint of the tubing stub and the clip axis. I'll dismiss the bend radius header for now. I'll select the second clip axis to continue to the route. And select the third clip axis well to wrap the tubing around the back of the base plate. For the last segment of the route, I'll click to the endpoint of the tube. I'll exit the auto route command by clicking the green check to finish the auto route. Notice I am still in the 3D sketch. One way to fix this issue is by using the repair route command from the tubing toolbar. However, in this case, it makes sense feed tube directly into the second clip I added. This means I can delete this first clip from the assembly. I'll right click on it and choose delete. When I do, SOLIDWORKS ask if I want to read out to the shortest path. I'll click yes. And the tubing updates to go directly into the other clip. I'll also go to the last tubing clip I placed and rotate it so it's the same direction as the clip across it. Notice that the route automatically updates to accommodate to the adjustment made to the clip. I want to flip the direction or to this route. To this, I simply right click on the straight route segment of the clip and select flip direction from the menu so that there is a loop between the fitting and the tubing clip. Now in this design, I know that there will be certain components added later that this route can't interfere with. So I would like to somehow make sure the routes do not pass through a particular volume within the assembly. I know that this volume can be virtually represented by a 10 inch that passes through the assembly. Let me exit the route sketch and exit edit component mode. Next, let's create a new component to represent this volume. I'll go to the insert component, new part. I'll start the sketch to the cylinder base in the inner side of the left panel before I start sketching. I'll make sure that the units are set to inches. I'll select circle with the 10 inch diameter. And I'll add it a few more dimensions to fully define its location. From the feature tab of the command manager, I'll click the extrude icon. Use up to surface end condition and select the face of the panel to the opposite side. I'll click green check to finish the feature. Since this part just represents a volume of a space and not actual component, I'll turn this part into an envelope by right click it from the feature manager design tree and selecting its component properties. I'll activate the envelope option and click OK. The part becomes transparent. Now distinguish its messless envelope used for reference purpose. I want to find out where the tube routes interfere with the cylinder. To do this, I'll right click the envelope from the feature manager design tree. Select the envelope. Select using envelope and a dialog box appears. 
I'll make sure that the only select components inside envelope and crossing envelope are enabled and that the treat coincidence as crossing box is cleared. I'll click OK and three tubes are selected and are highlighted in blue. To fix this problem, I could either drag the splines out of the cylindrical slender way or I could change position of the holes of the base to reposition the tube clips. First, I'll move these two tubes to repositioning the tube and then adjust the shape of the subline for the tube on left. From the feature manager design tree, I'll expand the tree, look for the feature called diameter hole one. I'll go ahead and edit this feature. We intend to reposition the location of the holes of the base to relocate the clips. From the whole specification property manager, I'll click to the position tab and adjust some of the dimensions. First, I'll delete two dimensions at the top. And then a vertical relation to the holes on the right. I'll also make the holes on the left vertical. I'll click to green check to finish repositioning the holes. I'll exit the sub assembly. Now I just need to add a couple tub uh, tubing clips and then read out the supplines. Then I'll right click on the first route. I'll select edit route from the menu. Next I'll click auto route icon on the tubing toolbar. And set routing mode to read out to supply. From here I'll drag tubing clip from the design library onto the adjustant hold. To make auto road at this new clip at the route, I'll click the main route and then clip axis. I'll click the green check twice to exit auto route. To finish off the assembly, I'll adjust the remaining routes as needed to avoid interface with the cylinder. I'll edit this route here from the right click menu. And you can uh, show that the route automatically updates are fitted within the assembly. I'll also drag this endpoint to the supply so that the curvature of the tube changes and the bend does not overlap with the cylindrical envelope. I'll also supply along the left side of the base and drag the endpoint of the supply handle to adjust the curvature so that the tube does not overlap with the assembly. After adjusting the routes, I'll exit back to the main assembly. Now if I check see if any interference to found between the envelope and the routes. No routes are highlighted, meaning they are no longer interfere with the cylinder, so the routes are all complete.